Hey, it's Tia Shanae with the Grace for this podcast. I am so excited to be before you guys today. Um, we actually are finally live and in color. I'm saying finally, like we 15 episodes in, but we only one episode or two episodes now in, but now we're live and in color. You know, the last episode, you, you guys got that good, good podcast off that good iPhone. But today we got the light set up, the camera is rolling, I got my son with me, and we're he's so cool he just like yeah mom i'm here but we're super excited about um just sitting down and having some real uh, organic and raw conversations with you guys today about parenthood and life and you know just going through the the strolls and the ups and downs of living this good thing here we call life so you want to say something to the people son uh what's up my name is zay i'm just glad to be on the podcast with my mom okay all right you gonna pray and sing You gonna let me do it? Yeah. So you gonna close us out in prayer? Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Y'all heard that right? He gonna close us out in prayer. So let's go. Okay, Father God, we come to you first of all, Lord. Just thanking you for the opportunity, Lord, to be before your people today with a new episode for the Grace for This podcast. Thank you for the vision that you have given me, Lord God. Thank you for the space that you have created for me to navigate through, Lord God. And I just ask that you will just rest and breathe on this episode and every episode after this. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Did you close your eyes during prayer? Yes. You know I can run the tape back. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Teenagers, man. Teenagers. Teenagers. What's up, son? What's up, mom? So, you have to speak up a little bit so the people can hear you. All right. All right, what? I got you. Okay. So, what's up? You said you had some questions that you prepared that you wanted to ask me. So, let's get into it. Um, let's get into it. Uh, well, what point do you feel that you're at right now in your life? What point do I feel like I'm at right now in my life? Well, to be honest with you, sometimes I feel like every point is a struggle point. Like, I, So, the thing about life is... As you grow, um, you realize that you're not as grown as you thought you were. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, remember we was having that conversation. We went to go eat crab that time. And we were just talking about, like, how life will teach you. Like, life will life you to where you, you know, you you, you feel like you've reached a, a certain um, a certain level in your life. And you feel like, okay, I made it because I did this, I did this, I did that. And then life happens or a situation happens. And it's like, oh, okay, I'm not as grown as I thought I was. So, I believe that right now I'm in a season and a point in my life where I just want to truly obey God and hear from Him. And that's regard in regards to my business, um, raising my children, my marriage, um, everything that's concerned to me. So, I'm literally faith-stepping right now. Like, I don't feel like I got it all. I hope I never feel like that because the moment I feel like I have it all, I won't have any need for the Lord. What point in your life do you feel you are in it right now? Um, Maybe you gotta speak up. I just feel like I'm in a like a learning stage. I'm just trying to learn, like learn from my mistakes as well. Cause like I done did some stuff like repeated some some stuff repeatedly over and over again. Yeah. And I regret regret doing. Even at your young age, you feel like you have things that you regret already. Really? Yeah, because I, I, I feel like... You got to speak up. I feel like a lot of stuff would be different. A lot of stuff would be different if I would have changed what I did. Okay. You want to give an example or you want to just leave that? I just want to leave that. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to leave that one. Okay, then we're going to respect that. He just want to leave that one. Um, one of the things I, I always try to talk to you about is truly, truly, truly being in the place where... Um, our level of communication is always on point. And I'm not saying perfect, but us being in the place in in our communication to where you can always come to me about anything. And I think for the most part, you pretty much do, right? Yeah, I do. Sometimes. It is really depending on like the moods you in, the mood I'm in. Sometimes, like you said, we do kind of clash a little bit. We be clashing, y'all. This teenage, raising teenagers, 
We just going to continue to plead the blood of Jesus over raising teenagers. I think one of the hardest things is that you've never been a woman before and you ain't never been 34. And I've never been a little boy before. I've been 16, but I've never been a little boy before. Yeah. So just like the vast differences and just that alone, like, you know, you being a male, me being a female is is, is a huge deal. Um, so, yeah, what else? What else? What's up? Um, you got any questions you want to ask me? I just want us to just flow naturally off the dome. I really think, you know, your hair looks nice. You trying to find something to compliment me on? <laughs> All right, you got to sit up and look in the camera, Xavier. Come on, what's up? You got to sit up and, and engage with the people. Look like you want to be here. You all slumped over. You said, you said, don't look like I want to. I do want to be here. No, I'm but saying, I'm saying, and, and look like you want to be here. I didn't uh, say you look like you don't want to be here. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, the questions that I have is probably on my phone so you see that so I can't go to it okay well we just gonna continue to flow like we were flowing because we put some parameters in place um, with his cell phone and so after a certain time it cut off was that too much information for the people absolutely why I think you need to cut that out why I'm ashamed I ain't been in trouble all year it's just like where I started. That's how you feel every time you get in trouble? You feel like you're back where you started? Yeah. You feel like that in general or just when you, like, with me? Any, like... It, no, just in general. Like, any, like, anytime I get in trouble, I just feel like, dang, I'm back where I started. Gotta restart again. Well, that's interesting that you said that because I believe it's the exact opposite. Like, I think I think when you get in trouble and you allow yourself to, not necessarily trouble, but when you get to a place in your life where you need discipline, I don't believe it, 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 it takes you all the way back to the beginning. And the reason why I say that is because at that point where you are, where you needed the discipline and the rearing, you still have gained so much knowledge and wisdom up until this point. So now you know how to navigate and move going forward, you know, that was just a learning curve. You know what I'm saying? It didn't necessarily shoot you back, but it was a learning curve. What do you think about that? If, if you were to just change your perspective on when you get in a situation to where discipline needs to be, you know, added to the... I just feel like, um, like, because you, you said that, um, it's like a a learning experience I feel I mean it's a learning experience too but it's like you just went through this not just went through this but like you change you, you tried your best you tried your hardest to stay out of trouble you just tried your hardest to stay away from the the negative right and a negative thing happens again and they just feel like dang like I done did all this to stop not stop but I done now everything that I done did to stop from getting in trouble or stop from doing what I was doing or mm -hmm. whatever. And now I'm back where I started. So it's like... Yeah. Well, see, that... Well, I guess that's what I'm trying to say is it's not necessarily you being back where you started, though. Because it's not like I'm taking you back to the standpoint of, or I can't take you back, right? It's kind of like how our relationship is with God. Our relationship is with the Father. It's like if we get to a point in our life where, you know, we, we create a system where I'm regularly, like, you, you see me praying in the morning and listening to my worship music and stuff like that. If I get to a place where I'm like, okay, I go two, three days without doing it. The Lord doesn't, if, if I get to a place where I need his discipline or his guidance, he doesn't send me all the way back to when I first got saved and when I first encountered him. He doesn't, he doesn't take his love and his glory and his protection away from me because I didn't, I didn't meet whatever standard was. And, and I think if you look at parenthood in that regard, right? Like nothing is changing, 
I'm really trying to stretch you and grow you. And that's how God deals with us, honestly. Like, you'll get to a point in your life where you'll be like, okay, God, now what? Like, now what? And then you say, okay, Lord, I want to grow, or I want to get stronger, or I want to be more disciplined in my finances, or I want to be a better steward over my finances, or I want to be a better steward over my time. And when you ask God those things, then that's when the stretching comes. And so it's kind of like that when you when you parent it with your child. It's like you get to a point where you just need a little more stretching. Right, so you having that downtime with your phone right now. I know you really didn't want to talk about this, but we're just gonna keep flowing. You having that downtime with your phone gives you the opportunity if you change your perspective, right? If you change the way that you think, which is what I talked about. If anybody listened to the very first episode, The Great Parallel, is changing your perspective, right? You can change your perspective to say, you know what, okay, yeah, I messed up, but it's not gonna seasons change, right? And and we go through those, go through different seasons. And not just in our life, but in the the seat, like you know, what am I trying to say? The the seasons, like winter, spring, summer, fall, like literally on Earth, we go through those seasons on Earth, and we also go through them in life and in our personal experiences. And so, in this situation, I feel like if you were to change your perspective to say, okay, all right, I got this little. Okay, it's, it's not a setback, but it is like a little bit of an awakening to where. I can say, okay, there are some behaviors that I need to change, okay? How can I start changing those behaviors? Well, now that your phone shuts off at a certain time, that gives you the opportunity to sit and think and reflect. And that's where the stretching and the growing come from. Yeah. As opposed to feeling like you got to start all the way back from the beginning. Yeah, I guess you're right. Uh, yeah, I guess you're right. But sometimes, I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't really got nothing else to say. Like you just, you you did it. So I did yeah. what? Like you you made that point. Well, I wasn't really trying to make a point. I, what I want you to do is grow in your perspective. I want you to grow in your perspective, and I want you to grow in your thinking, because ultimately, you growing, you growing in your thinking and you growing in your perspective gives yourself. Sorry, y'all. I just had to check and make sure everything was good. You growing in your perspective and your thinking gives you gives gives you an advantage at life a little bit, you know. And like I said, it goes back to my first episode. I don't know if you listened to it. Did you listen to it? Yeah, I listened to it. Okay. Well, yeah, I listened to it. We ain't gonna cap. No, I, I listened to it, but I ain't listened to like the whole entire thing. But I, I most definitely listened to it. I, I think I might in. need to make that a requirement before a person. I tapped in though. I tapped in for sure. I think I need to make that a requirement. Like, I need to create, like, a checklist. Like, did you listen to the previous episodes before you can just come sit on the blue couch? But it... <laughs> <laughs> sit on the blue couch. Everybody can't listen to the whole thing. I mean, tapped in, I commented, I showed love. Okay, well, the last episode, like I was saying, we're talking about the great parallel and, and the, you know, and the difference in our perspective and our thinking. So... I just want you to be mindful of that. Like, everything doesn't have to be negative. And I feel like, I feel so bad for y'all. Like, this generation, not bad. I shouldn't say that because that's kind of negative. But I feel like it should prompt people um, in the kingdom to really, really, really pray and cover y'all. Because it's almost like this generation, you guys easily feel doomed and defeated. Like, when we were growing up, it's like... You had to have a little hair on your chest in the second grade. Like, you had to have some hair on your chest in the second grade. Because kids have always been cruel and mean, but it's heightened in this, this day and age because of social media, of course. The music, you know, is just different. And so, that leads me to the next point that I want to talk about, which is identity. Like, we were talking in the car a little bit, and I know you said... You know, this is a subject that you really didn't want to unpack. But, you know, you my son. I'm going to still cover you. I ain't going to lay it all out on the table. But one of the things I wanted to talk about as far as identity is I believe that it is so important for us as earthly parents to create a space for our children to where they feel um, comfortable and vulnerable enough to come to us regardless of whatever it is that they're feeling or they're or they're thinking and so one thing i always say to my son is i don't want to have a 37 year old son healing from his seven year old self and what i mean by that is we we grew up in a day and age where it was like 
children were supposed to be seen and not heard. Like, people can see you, but you better sit down and be quiet, right? Yeah. We didn't talk about mental health. We didn't talk about emotional trauma. We didn't talk about things that, that, that perplexed us and bothered us in our childhood. And so you see so many people now talking about therapy and mental health because there was no space for it back then. Yeah. You know? And so now I think it's so good that we that we continue to keep that dialogue open amongst our children. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't really know what I want to say right now, cause like, I mean that's 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 true, cause I mean I don't know what what y'all had going on back in the old days. Well, first of all, I'm not old. We're not gonna holler no right. old days. But like, eighties baby. Yeah, I do feel where you're coming from though, cause social media really does take like a a big toll. On the um, on the on the characters that people are in life mm-hmm. today, uh, cause you can hide your identity dealing with social media, and like people can portray this image as as something that they're not, or trying to create something that they're not. Mm-hmm. But yeah, people really don't know who you are or who you want to be. So, I mean, to be honest, then me cutting your phone off at 10 o'clock is like a protective measure, you don't think? Or or, or I, I was hoping that it would be yeah. to a certain extent. Because if, if all you're doing is sitting on your phone, scrolling on TikTok, looking at who has what, who's done what, who went where, who went who, it's like you don't give any time for yourself to sit with your thoughts. Remember I was telling you on the way here, it's like, to be honest, the only way for you to truly... And I'm not saying you're supposed to know who you are right now at 15 and 16. Because there's a lot of people in their 30s and 40s and 50s that don't know who they are. That's a lifelong journey. But the grounding foundation is what I'm trying to teach you. Which is learning how to take everything that you think, feel, desire, whatever it is, take it to the Father. Right? Take it to God. And that's why I always ask you... Son, did you pray? Did you pray today? Have you prayed? Because it's so important. And, and the thing, one of the things that I've always said is I don't want to smother you with prayer, right? Like I don't, I don't want to be one of those parents. I, I smother you in my own space with prayer, right? You remember when I, um, when I uh, took them scriptures? What I do with them scriptures? Uh, which one? Remember I wrote out all them scriptures and where I put them at. Yes. Yeah, you put them in my pillow. You got to speak up. Yeah, you put them in my pillow, my mattress, my shoes. Yeah. So, the thing is, like, I'm teaching you that the word is a weapon, but I'm doing it in such a way to where you don't feel like... Because, you know, are you, have you ever heard, like, stories about preachers' kids who went so far away from the church because they were just in church all day, constantly, constantly? And I don't think there's anything wrong with church, but I believe when you don't know your child, and I feel like I've had you, I mean, for the last 15 years, I think I know a few things about you, enough to know that if I smothered you like that, you would go the opposite way. But one thing you do do is observe and you pay attention. So I know for a fact that my son would refer back to the weapons that you saw me use, the worship, the prayer, the scriptures, because guess what? I'm not going to always be able to be your covering and your protection. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to go back to that. How do you feel your relationship is with God right now? Um. Honestly, I feel like it's getting better. Uh. It's not like the strongest it could possibly be yet, and I feel like I'm slowly trying to make it. Th- make it there. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I'm. Ju- I'm trying. I'm trying. So let me ask you this question. First of all, that's amazing. You to be strong in stature. Hmm. Nothing. I'm gonna have to edit that out too. For me, on Yes. Maybe not. I mean, it's just a yawn. <laughs> oh, 
why you had time. You you took a nap before we left the house and everything. I didn't take a nap. Bruh, when I walked back in from getting coffee, you was out of there. I was asleep. <laughs> you was out of there. No, because Halo, Halo cartoons and stuff be boring. Like, I don't want to just sit here. <laughs> well, I was only like, gone for a few minutes. I just needed to go get some coffee. Yeah, I just dozed off a little bit. I used to go now you're trying to doze off now? Because I be at school all day. We be doing tests and stuff. I be up. Like, I, I got to stay up to be able to pass. So I be up the whole day. Everybody else be had their head down. I'm the only one up. Constantly working. Come on, I be tired. You be tired? Yes. Do you feel like parents don't really understand how tired y'all be? Yes. We be at school for, what, nine hours? We I wake up at 5.30. Welcome day. to the good life. I mean, as parents, y'all be tired too. Especially with it being y'all have lower energy. How you know we got lower energy to y'all? Because I thought that was a thing. Old people got lower energy. Not old, but like older people got. Listen, I'm going to be 21 for the next 21 years. I ain't nothing about me uh-huh. old, you did. Okay. Okay? Huh? So what's up, son? You ready to go? Uh, we probably going to wrap this podcast up because it is a school night for my dear son. But um, I know you said you had a couple more questions. You can ask me another question. We're going to unpack it. And then, um, you know, if the Lord sees fit, we'll do a part two. Um, We'll bring Xavier back um, for another episode. Maybe not the next episode, but um, sometime in the near future. So go ahead and get your question out. Um, uh, Have you ever been depressed? Absolutely. How does you deal with depression? Um, honestly, I believe that tag de- depression is just a hard thing. To, do you feel like you're battling depression? No. So what made you ask me that question? I just want to know. I have. I have battled depression before. Um, you know, life has a way of taking you through changes. But to be honest... The only thing that I feel like works for depression is hope. Like, not letting go of hope. Like, hope for a new tomorrow. Hope for a new day. Hope for new grace. Hope for new mercy. Hope for the situation to change. Huh? My bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. But hope... Hope can only go too far. At at a point, you got to really come in with yourself and be like, it's not going. I hope not. Hope does hope really like take it take you a long way? It depends on what you're hoping for. If 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 you're hoping based on the the life that God wants us to have, which is to give us hope and a future, Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven, then yes, hope is gonna carry you through your entire life. Hope renews. Hope gives you the opportunity to renew your mind. So if you want me to give you an answer other than than what I know to work, I can't help you. But I do know, I, I'm not going to say I can't help you because I can't help you. But we're just going to have to restructure the way that we think and operate. I'm, I'm just going to have to continue to direct you back to the word. But I also, I'm not ignorant to the fact that I, I know that depression sometimes feel like, feels like a never-ending thing and you do at some point have to go in and pick yourself up but if you're depressed where do you get that strength from you have to pull that strength from the almighty god yeah the one and only jesus christ that's the only way for you to get that strength because if you don't have it within yourself then where are you gonna pull it from yeah that's true that's true i just feel like yeah at a certain point you just gotta realize that just being depressed, not just be, not just being depressed, but like, just whatever you're doing, whether it's just sitting in your bed, just honestly being sad all the time, it, it's not gonna do nothing for you. Yeah, it's just not gonna do nothing for you. So you know what you gotta do? You gotta build up your spirit, man. You gotta build up your spirit bank, your spirit tank. You gotta continue to a lot of Holy Spirit. Oh, excuse me. You have to continue to a lot of Holy Spirit to fill you up. 
You got to continue to read your word. You got to continue to pray. And that's why I told you, this goes back to what I told you, guarding your ear gates, what you listen to. If what you listen to is not edifying for your spirit, if it's not edifying and building you up, then you're 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 going in a deficit. Yeah. Same thing with what you watch, what you read, what you look at. All of those things are so important. Yeah. Absolutely important. So when I say in the morning, get up, turn on some worship music. Okay. Yeah, you've been telling me that. But in the morning it's just be too early for all that. I ain't gonna lie. It ain't never too early for a little bit of Jesus. I understand that, but my I wake up at five thirty. He will renew your no, strength. No, 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 no. So wait no. I say I understand I understand Wait on the Lord. I understand you think you can sing, but my this is not Think I can sing. This is not for my Heavenly Father think I sound beautiful. Circumstances for your singing, right? I beg your pardon. This is not the circumstances for you saying it. <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. This is, this what about this one? Sometimes you have to encourage no, 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 you your. It. I was flat. Yeah, you yourself. <laughs> you I'm gonna try it again. Sometimes you. Have to speak victory during the test. It's like you got one sound. You know, singers have to change. <laughs> you said I got one sound? You have one sound. <laughs> Boy. All right, say something for me real quick because we get ready to close out. Uh. No, I was going to tell you what to say. Okay. Okay, so y'all, it may be a part two. I'm not sure when, but it may be a part two. This has been great, son. Dab me up. Need to make a handshake. All right, come on, let's go. No, no, no. Not, not right, right people. No, not right now. On part two, we gonna we gonna show them the handshake. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I want you to say, cause you gotta say that, and then you have to close out in prayer. You ready? I gotta close out in prayer. I forgot I gotta do that. What you mean? Cause I'm not really a good prayer. When I pray, I just be talking. That's how. That's the best way. My, but I can't just talk. Oh, you just go, you gonna pr- close us out on, on today. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You gonna close us out today. But before you close us out, I want you to say, GC, are you with me? Oh, yeah. We got the grace we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Come on. My, that's too much. No, it's not. One, two, three. What did you say again? GC, are you with me? GC is the Grace Crew. GC, are you with me? Oh, yeah. We got the Grace. We ain't going nowhere. Wait, you got to run it back. Now you know what you got to say. GC, are you with me? We got the Grace. We ain't going <laughs> No, for real, son. I'm not a singer. That's okay. You, you don't even have to sing it. You just say, GC, are you with me? Oh yeah, we got the grace. We ain't going nowhere. My, mel- my melody a little off. GC, oh. are you with me? We got. We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna work on that. We gonna work on that next episode, y'all. We gonna get him to get the the jingle down. I should have had him rehearse it. But the GC is our grace crew. Those are our viewers, the people that watch us, support us, love us, like the page like what what is so funny <laughs> what's so funny it's definitely be your outro song what she said are you with me yeah <laughs> you don't like it <laughs> you don't like it you could have to get somebody to sing it because what it don't even have to be like no perfect pitch i don't think that should be it that shouldn't be the GC, are you with me? (laughs) (laughs) Why am I like crying real tears? Okay, son. Well, since you hating on me, first of all, I hate it. I'm just telling you what you don't want to (laughs) hear.
Boy, you was really on one. You, so it took you a minute to warm up. This is the day I wanted people to see the whole episode. Okay. All right. Well, first of all, I want to thank you for coming on the show, coming on the episode, this particular podcast. Grace for this. Um, thank you for the opportunity to kind of get in your business a little bit. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing a part two with you. Um, and hopefully you, I know you was a little nervous, but hopefully next time you'll really, you know, open up a little bit and just, you know, create a little more of a space for us to, like, just, I want it to be a natural flow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't want you to feel like you're being interviewed by nobody. Yeah. Um, and so, now aren't you glad we didn't do it live? Remember you wanted to do it live? Live. Oh, Remember when I was yeah. asking you, should we re pre-record it or do it live? Yeah. I said live. Yes, aren't you get glad? Because you would have yeah. really been nervous then. Yeah. So. Real shy. Say something encouraging to the people so we can uh, close out in prayer. Oh, you going to close out in keep, prayer. Keep your head up. Make sure y'all stay safe. People are cruel. So stay away from. Not don't stay away, but watch us around us. That's all I got to say. Yeah. Say something else to the people. Um. Love Jesus because at the end of the day, He's one that's gonna always be there for you. A lot of people are not gonna be there. So at the end of the day. Uh, and another thing, make sure you know who you got before you lose it because once it's gone, it's gone. So I close out in prayer. Uh I, I'm not really good at praying, so I'm really just gonna talk how I feel. Hey. We're not going to say what you're not good at. You're excellent at prayer. The Lord just wants to hear your voice. So you go ahead and bless this podcast with your prayer. Okay? okay. All right. All right. Don't be disappointed in me. Uh, I just wanted to say, um, God, just look over look over my family. Look over my mom especially. That's the time that we're going in right now. I just want everybody to be self-aware. I just really want peace and joy because, yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, thank y'all for tuning in for the grace for this podcast. I really enjoyed this episode with my son. I pray that it blessed you guys um, to just see us in our raw, organic, unfiltered um, flow of, you know, just mother and son. Um, I really hope that, you know, some of the topics that we talked about today, it was only a few short episode, but I really hope that it blessed some people today. So I'm forever thankful for all of you guys that tuned in and may the Lord bless you and keep you and continue to make his face to shine upon you in Jesus name. Amen. GC out. <laughs>